So how do we interpret the results of our multiple regression now that we're actually able to run it? What are we going to uh, focus on and what are we going to conclude given our results? I've found it most useful to actually use real regression results and just focusing on the equations. So I'm using the same data set that I've used in previous uh, weeks, the World Happiness Report from 2023. You have this uh, sc uh, scatter plot of GDP per capita and happiness. It looks like there is an upward trajectory. You put in a fitted line, you see that it is indeed positive. However, we want to make sure that we can have confidence that this um, this line is actually the best fit line and that it's not actually horizontal in which you have um, no estimated relationship between the two variables. And so what we can do is um, just do this uh, by hand. You have the estimated results and you can plug it in for actual values for different countries to see what the expected or predicted values of this um, a happiness in this case given your independent variables so here I've added to GDP um, the freedom measure and so as I did last week you have an estimated relationship with just one independent variable of GDP of a negative slope a negative 2.47 is the intercept the expected value of y if you didn't have any GDP in your country x equals to zero and for GDP the estimated slope coefficient or the beta is 0.85. And what I think is really interesting and useful is to actually plug in those values to get that expected amount of happiness in Australia given GDP. And that gives us of um, uh, 10.82 is the GDP measure for Australia in this year. The beta and the alpha uh, stay the same, and that gives us an expected happiness of 7.27, which is a bit higher than the actual measured happiness in Australia in that year of 7.11. Now, in the multivariate approach, you can add in your additional variable freedom in this case, and you see the intercept value is lower. It's negative 4.19. The coefficient for GDP is uh, a little bit smaller, 0.72 compared to 0.85 above. And then you get this um, the slope for freedom of 3.74. You plug that in with your values for GDP, 0 0.7, uh, sorry, 10.82 for happiness and 0.91 uh, for freedom. And that gives you an expected happiness measure for Australia of 7.38, which is actually a little bit higher than the observed value that I mentioned before of 7.11. Of course, before I did all this, I made sure that all of my variables were statistically significant at the 0 0.001 uh, level. I, I, my threshold could have been 0.05. I'm just showing you the the highest uh, value that I that put in. And what that allows us to do is to kind of put that, uh, that fitted line uh, to be able to see that estimated relationship, and then you can look at predicted values. Now here is your, our multiple regression results for, for happiness given the analysis tool pack in Excel, and you can see the same uh, individual um, estimated uh, coefficients and their standard errors for a number of different variables now. I'm not gonna go through what each one of these are and the recording for last week does that uh, for the Excel output, but you can see here that GDP has an estimated coefficient of 0.42 with a standard error of 0.11. That gives us a T-stat of 3.79, which uh, leaves very little under the T distribution uh, for the probability of chance, which is 0.0002 which most regression tables either present numbers at two decimal places or three, and that would, I would basically round to 0 0.000. So you basically have a zero uh, um, p-value that allows us to reject the null hypothesis that there's no relationship in favor of our alternate hypothesis that GDP is a statistically significant predictor of of happiness. And you can run through each one of these different variables. Most variables tend to increase happiness as they increase life expectancy, freedom, 
Uh, however, a positive affect, two variables have a negative effect as they become higher, generosity uh, and corruption with negative estimated relationships. You look at the R squared um, of 0.836, it suggests that almost 84% of the variation in happiness is uh, explained by our models. The F statistic is statistically significant, which we conclude that our model is better than just um, an estimated model with no independent variables and just the intercept, which is kind of a low bar to, to pass, but it's often important to, to highlight, uh, as with the, the long article we talked about last week, in which basically the models weren't any better than just an intercept-only model. The next question, of course, is how do we uh, interpret the tables? It's, it's a similar way to how we uh, interpret the direct results. And in the next section, we're going to be talking about how we can build the table ourselves. But I think what's relevant um, here is, uh, well, let's just get out the two in the middle because they have different uh, dependent uh, variables. But just in these two models represented on the left, and they're basically what people create by hand. Of course, there's statistical programs that automatically make tables out of your results. But you see all the decimal places are at three uh, to, to three numbers. Uh, GDP per capita is positive and significant in both. You can look uh, down. I always like to look at the notes section first to make sure that the numbers in the in the parentheses are standard errors. Some people will put t-statistics or p-values in those parentheses. You want to make sure what numbers you're looking at. The stars are at three different cut points, um, 0.05, uh, the 0.01, and uh, the 0.001. And you can kind of see the differences once you actually estimate two models that are slightly different. If you compare the column on the left to the column on the right, there's two new variables in that model on the right, positive affect and negative affect. It doesn't affect our main independent variables. Um, uh, our conclusions about its statistical significance, GDP per capita is still st statistically significant. However, there are some other slight differences freedom to make life choices is less statistically significant and the coefficient goes down by more than half but i think the one that's the biggest difference is that generosity was statistically significant in the first model but is no longer statistically significant in the second model and so what we have to do is to think about is the relationship between generosity and happiness really that robust to including other measures that might be good predictors of of happiness? Is there some causal relationship? Are they capturing some similar underlying process? And so you have to uh, look at the results and they're more useful in comparison to each other instead of standing by themselves. Same with the adjusted R-square down in the bottom. You see the amount of variation in the dependent variable explained goes up a little bit from 0.757 to 0.782. Um, however, most of the results seem to be pretty similar for the, the variables towards the top of the table. One thing to note between the data that we're using in class and the results that are presented here is that in the report, they pool data on happiness from across a number of different years. And so that's why you have the number of observations is almost 2,000 and 156 countries uh, included in all of their models. So this it includes uh, differences over time, which is why they include year fix effects. There's different ways of trying to um, understand the assumptions and how pool data violate those assumptions, which we talked about last week, uh, that there's ways of trying to correct for that, but just understand the differences between what we're doing in class and what these are, because one is just a cross-sectional uh, snapshot in time, and the other one looks at trends uh, and average values uh, over time, um, isolating the effect of time. Now let's turn to how we can create our own regression tables, which would be really useful in trying to highlight what are the most important takeaways, how we can run more than one model to report on them, and how we can describe our findings in the text in, uh, in ways that you highlight the things that you want to highlight to your readers.